Okay, everybody, part three of the difference between pharmaceuticals and aromatherapy or essential oils, okay? Um, I'm not gonna deep dive the science on this. I have other videos where I do that, but I want to talk about just very briefly how they work uh, I want to give you like the broader vision of how these two different things work. We've talked about how they are different spiritually. We've talked about how they are different uh, philosophically. And I want to quickly talk on the biochemistry piece of it, but without getting crazy into the weeds, okay? So what I want you to understand is the, the, the two concepts. Again, we have this completely different paradigm when we're dealing with natural healing and we're dealing with man-made definition of healing, right? Which is really just symptom suppression. If you haven't caught that video, go back and watch the philosophical um, side of pharmaceuticals, right? Because they have a radically different way of approaching healing and they have a different definition of healing. It's one that I actually don't agree with. Um, as much as I love to have my symptoms go away, I want to get to the root cause of whatever is, is causing those symptoms. So when we are talking about Western medicine, pharmakia, right? Um, when we're talking about pharmaceuticals, I'm using the Greek word because that's it came from pharmakia, which meant witchcraft or sorcery or poison, okay? That's what drugs are. They alter our state of consciousness, they alter our spiritual state, and they affect our body at you know the cellular level and cause some sort of uh, reaction. When we are talking about that, what we're really talking about are these huge laboratories that spend billions and billions of dollars constructing molecules. Now, this is not as easy as like Tinker Toys, where you just take the little piece and you insert the little, you know, connector and whatever. It's actually unbelievably difficult. And so each pharmaceutical company has these huge libraries of like hundreds of millions of different molecular structures that they are proprietary and they keep them under lock and key so that nobody else out there could ever see their little molecules that they've built. But no matter how they build their molecules, nothing that they could ever produce can come even remotely close to the complexity and nuance and diversity of the things that are produced in nature, okay? Obviously that's God's design versus man's design. Like man's design is a joke. So 50% of pharmaceuticals actually start with a plant or a natural product, a plant product, okay? They, they take the the molecules from a plant that have some sort of effect, but the thing is that they can't reproduce that in their laboratory. They can't patent something from nature, and that's where the money is, so they take something from nature and they try to copy it as best they can. They basically simplify it down, and then they learn how to replicate it in their lab, okay? So they're, they're starting with nature as their jumping off point, but then they're turning it into something other, and the other is basically a molecule that they're going to keep in their library, and the ultimate goal of the pharmaceutical companies is to create a molecule that will interact with a cell and they actually specifically will interact with a protein. Now the proteins are the powerhouse, they're the workhorse, they're the ones that move and shake and get stuff done. They carry, carry the messages, they do the me metabolism, they do all of this stuff inside of the cell. They're the worker bees of the cell, okay? So the goal of the pharmaceutical company is to take, to develop some sort of molecular, and we're talking literally about a geometric structure that will geometrically fit like a key into a lock of a protein, okay? And then it opens up the cell and it starts this whole entire cascading series of events inside the cell because this active ingredient, if you will, is basically uh, instructing this protein and then this, pro this protein that it touches on is gonna instruct all the rest of the cell how to behave. So you will get some sort of outcome that is a desired effect from the drug, but you will also get other outcomes that are the negative effects that those are side effects those are the things that we don't want and that is because of the way the nature of these inert molecules created by man when they interact with a the cell there's no organizing factor there's no life in them they simply trick the cell they they like plug in that an unnatural substance plugs into a natural cell and it tricks it into giving up these certain symptoms into into producing some sort of desired effect, but it also at the same time triggers this whole avalanche of things. So you end up also with undesirable effects. And the role of the Food and Drug Administration is really to say, well, you get all these desired effects, and then here's the list of the undesirable effects. Are they, can we live with that? 
Are we willing to take that risk, right? Obviously, if they're giving pills to somebody and it's killing them on the spot, that drug's not gonna fly. But if they're giving a pill to somebody and over time they develop liver cirrhosis or you know whatever it is, nah, you know, it's they put it on the warning label and they can pretty much say, I told you so. Okay, so you have this inert, basically dead man-made molecule, a synthetic, uh, molecule that is interacting with something that is natural and alive. Now, synthetic molecules, synthetic products do not fit in natural products, right? They just simply don't. So they have to fake the funk and, until they can get, they can magically get something that'll like kind of force its way in and trick your cell. So it's basically how that is operating. Now let's talk about natural substances and how they work. Okay. You guys have probably heard me say this a million times that an essential oil will just take this peppermint vitality. Okay, this essential oil, this oil inside this bottle, it is alive. When we get down to the quantum level, and I'm not gonna geek out on that, although I totally could. When we get down to the quantum level, all of the basic, like classic Newtonian physics falls apart, okay? So what I mean by that is, you know, in, in the world, in the universe, in the world of things that man, that universal laws, things that man made, including pharmaceuticals, including whatever. Like if you make a car, if you build a car, it might be all shiny and new for a while and eventually it's gonna rust, it's gonna break down, it's gonna get a flat tire, it's gonna have parts that break, it's gonna, in a hundred years that car is gonna just completely be half decomposed in a junkyard somewhere, right? That's called the law of entropy. It's one, it's the, it's a law of thermodynamics. Everything moves from a state of order into disorder. But when you get into it, but then when it comes to life, when you come to a life system, it's completely the opposite, right? Our bodies are designed to heal themselves. Our bodies are designed to organize themselves. This goes completely against the laws of the universe because they're the laws of life. They're totally different. So you think about, you know, everything from a bird to a tree, right? When we get a wound and we have something, you know, traumatic that has happened to us, our body gets to work organizing everything and it's recreating skin cells and hair cells and sweat glands and, you know, it's putting all those little capillaries and veins and vessels together. It's bringing antibodies in, right? It's like this whole entire system kicks into gear and starts working together. It's amazing, right? It totally, totally, totally defies the the classical physics laws of the universe, okay? So when you're dealing with a life system, you are dealing with an organizing uh, energy, okay? That's just the only way to put it. Now, when you are talking about essential oils, it's absolutely no different. We talked about in the plant, we're talking about the lifeblood of the plant, we're talking about all those little chemicals in there, dozens to hundreds of different chemical constituents, right? With In the pharmaceutical world, we've got one man-made synthetic chemical that's trying to trick your cell. When you're talking about essential oils, you're talking about dozens to hundreds of different little chemicals. They, every single one of them is different from each other and they all have their individual job to do. So because when you're dealing with life forces, you're dealing with organization, right? You're dealing at the quantum level with things that actually work together to repair and restore and bring back to homeostasis. These oils in this bottle do that in the plant, right? They heal the plant, they bring nutrients, they they fight off you know microbial agents, they do all this amazing stuff in the plant, they work together to do that. So then we capture the lifeblood of the plant, we put it in here, guess what? This is still very much alive. Measurable frequency, I've done talks on that also, right? They can measure the frequency of all these different oils. Um, and so each one of those constituents that are in a young living oil, they do in the plant, they, they do in us what they do in the plant. They have this organizing factor. So you have all of these different molecules that are all working on your cell at the same time. And you're not just taking one artificial molecule and causing it to trick your cell, which sets off a cascading series of events, including side effects, negative side effects. You have multiple different little molecules, right? All of them working, they surround your cell and they all work independently and they work to bring order, they work to bring homeostasis, they work to be, bring restoration and wellness to that cell and to every single cell around them. So they work radically, radically differently when you look at it at the cellular level, okay? So go back and watch uh, how pharmaceuticals and essential oils are different. They're different at the spiritual level, they're different philosophically, um, and the way that they go about 
bringing healing and they're very, very different at the biological level. They don't work anything nearly the same. So if you're talking to someone who, who is trying to treat essential oils, trying to use them the way that they use pharmaceuticals, this is the knowledge that we need to be armed with to say, whoa, it doesn't work like that. And now you guys know why.